by LinkedIn. We are still here. We're still answering questions and it is fun. So, um, brilliant question, brilliant question for this moment in time. And it's something that everybody has been doing now, but sh how could we help people do this better? So Dean, there's nobody better to go to um, in terms of Mr. Tyler's, uh, but you, you're not tight. <laughs> You're, you're shrewd. Um, if something's worth getting through for the RDLC, I just don't ask you anymore. I'll go straight to Dan. So um, tips on how to run a super lean business. Now, yeah. you're brilliant at this, obviously, but from, from running that PLC that had to basically trade through some really tough times and make some massively tough decisions, your yeah. skill set and, and you know, keeping a business lean but productive are, are legendary. Do you want to just give us an, an, an idea of some of the things that you might have been doing now or, or always that people can, to, can lean against? Yeah, I can do. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to cover exactly what went on because I've, I've done it at numerous lunches, but um, I was always about efficiencies beforehand. I've never been one to um, be infected by hubris and overspend. I always looked at ROI on everybody. Um, I think we've discussed it before as, as a business. One of the things I did on every single consultant that joined my businesses was my return on investment. And the way I did that was I would track their earnings on their cost of their desks, which we, we know do actually vary quite wildly in terms of what people are spending on individuals these days. But the way I looked at it was that was my student loan to you as a recruiter. Uh, if it was five grand, so the first month's five, then the next month's 10, the next 15 and so on right but there becomes a point where they start to make money there's a point where they start to go over their threshold there's a point where they actually start to pay back the investment that you've made then there's a point where you both make money and it is amazing sometimes where that how far that point can be stretched out and you can sit with people sometimes and get them to understand you know how much effort a business puts into getting you there at the end of the year you might look like a rock star on your final quarter or in the first quarter of the following year um but actually it costs a lot of time effort input into that business and, and i think sometimes people become detached from that and think it's just going to keep working and um they're not on top of their numbers when they're doing their hires they're just hiring they don't know whether they've got the cash in a bank they think they have because there's deals being done but when you sit down and look at the data and, and again, just going back to, uh, I suppose, when I took over a PLC that had acquired my business and then issued two year profit warnings, 30 million quid of debt, I had to, <laughs> who had R3, um, I, had to, I, had to, I had to get deep down and dirty, right? Because I, because I didn't know what I did. I, did, I hadn't worked with most of these people before. And when you start to look at things in their black and white, and not the emotion that's going on in the room about, oh, this, this person actually used to be really good or this, Actually, you say, well, hold on, right? I need to make some material changes on my head, be it. I'm going to take out this part of the business. And I did. And I looked at, if I'm paying this person and all this cost here, what have they got to bring me in to put a pound to my bottom line, right? Because actually, sometimes there's dilution of costs, uh, dilution of payment, because your business development's bringing in deals. Then you've got a consultant filling them and a resourcer and you've got this team and this delivery team and everybody's getting a slice of this cake and the only, the only person who doesn't get any slice of this cake is the business and so you have to be on your data and on your business and to do that i, I just honestly think even when you're small as a business you do need a good fd or a good cfo but you need somebody who understands recruitment because i tell you this now and you, you know this for a fact because over the last six years We've unpicked this for so many businesses. The accountant down the high street or your mate's friends who used to do, you know, ledgers for a local business isn't going to be a help be able to help you grow a recruitment business. Only me? Oh, you don't want to do it like that. I don't believe you wanting to do that. I love the fact that you said that because everybody has got mothers, brothers, cousins, uncle doing their, their numbers and they just don't get it. And when you ask someone to look at their, their p and uh, well, it's, it's a joke. And it, when you look at the MI that comes out of it, it it's, it's a joke. You don't need to hire a full-time FD. There's some brilliant people who do, who would do it as, as um, Dan Urmson's a genius at this stuff. He will understand your numbers. Uh, he will give you insights that you hadn't even thought of. So, so I think just to, 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 to wrap that into a nice sort of neat package with a bow, you need some science in terms of everything that you're doing. 
So, mm-hmm. so if you know what your triggers to hire are, don't just hire willy nilly. Make sure that you understand what your cost per desk is, what your good number is. So back in the day for me, it used to be um, I was 4K cost per desk. I was generating 10K averages. If I take another five people on, I needed another 50 grand on my weekly G, G uh, so my um, on my monthly GP. So two and a half K times five, which is oh my god, why did I choose that number? Um, so that's uh, ten, so twelve and a half K. So twelve and a half K on my weekly GP, on my weekly GP. Then I could trigger hiring again. So I knew that everybody in my business was generating me six grand per person, so four K cost. 10 gate revenue, 6K per person, 72 grand. If I've got 10 people, 720 grand. If I've got 100 people, 7.2 million. Simple as that. And that was a basic formula for growth. One of the things that I do think people are falling foul of at the moment is the boss keeps buying this, this new tech. Good morning. Welcome to reception. I am reception bot. So whatever's shiny, whatever's out there, whatever's new, They'll go out and buy because they think that will help me make more more money. But it, it will, but what actually they're doing, because they're not tweaking any of the other dashboard numbers, they're making it easier for recruiters to hit the same 10 or 12K number, but you just incl- increased your cost base. So why is the boss spending all this money? Surely then the threshold sh- should go up. Or they need to, the, the consultants need to get together and work out. That's what it costs us extra a month. That's happening. Where do we find that money? So reduce mm-hmm. your advertising, Re- reduce the product here and there. You know, just don't get the coffee involved. Don't give them a proper PL because they'd be arguing about the price of the coffee. But you, you, so you say, of all of these things, that's what you can turn down to do this. We're doing this. You go and find me that money, or it's going on your threshold. And stuff like that yeah. makes perfect sense. It does make purpose. And and look, from, from back when uh, we did it back back in you know in, in the computer futures days to now, the amount of rec tech and assistance, I do think on the flip side that competition's higher because barriers to entry are lower. Um, but if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put all this effort into making you so much better at your job and get you all this rec tech, there is a part that actually you you know you're losing essentially parts of your job you don't have to do anymore. So you've got more time to focus on selling. You should be better at selling. So therefore, yeah. where you were looking, um, you know, for your ten grand a, a month on your desk, that was many many years ago, right? And nobody should be looking for ten grand a month on the desk now no. because the desk cost is double what it was back then. So why aren't we looking for fifteens and twenties? You know, I've given you all this rec tech, I've given you all all this information. It's groups like the RDLC that we're members of that are giving all this phenomenal insight into recruitment. You should be doing more, okay? And if you're not doing more, what's the problem? You know, because that's the only way you're going to keep your your business lean and agile and make sure that everybody... Look, some some people can hit certain numbers and some people can't. But as long as everybody's hitting the best they can hit, you've got a great company, all right? And and I think that's, that's what you can look at. You talk a lot about um, um, a pound saved is not the same as a pound earned, right? So we want pounds earned, but the minute COVID hit, where did everyone look? They went straight into their PL and they basically got a, they got a sharpie out and went gone, 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 gone. Well, it was quite interesting that exercise because people right here, right now, are performing pretty well, right? So performance is going up and up and up. The whole bounce back effect. Every time Boris lets us out, lets us out we start increasing business, increasing sales, and the economy went up 15.5%. Every time it locks us down, I hate to see what the numbers are gonna be this time around, but you know we're doing better with spending less. But we should be taking some of those elements into everyday business. So they review all of your cost base and look at ROIs annually. Try to renegotiate all, everything that you think, I'm getting value from this, that's fine. If I'm not getting value from this, we're either gonna serve notice or we're going to or, and use that money for something else or renegotiate a price that you're happy to pay and just be agile with this stuff. So take that whole sort of, you, there must be a benefit that came from COVID. This might be it, that everyone is just a little bit sharper in terms of operating costs because businesses got fat, didn't they? Yeah, they did get fat. And, and it happens. It happens in good markets all the time. I know uh, in my market when it was good many years ago, I, 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 I had people join us from some of the really big, had people join me from Capita back 
um, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the mid 2000s. And uh, they joined us and they were like, well, why haven't you got one of these and two of these and five of those? And so they don't make any money. And it was quite, quite apparent then when the market changed that they didn't make any money and that, and that became an issue for them. I mean, actually, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, my, my old oh, chairman... I'll, 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 funny, I'll be the judge. Go on then. Yeah. <laughs> actually, it's not, actually, you might find this one quite funny because it's about me. Um, so and, and my, my old chairman used to give out this book to FDs and he was on 22 boards. He's, he's quite well known. I don't want to give him any oxygen. Um, but it was, I think it's called 72 Ways uh, to Improve Your Business's Finance or something, right? I can't remember what it was, American book. And I ordered it for one of the, the businesses I'm an investor in, but I'm also uh, a Ned on their board. And within a, within a few weeks, I said, look, you want to read this? You want your FD on this? It's great. Within a few weeks, the whole board got a phone call and said, um, we're removing all, all Neds and board. Because obviously they're paying for this, right? We're removing everybody. Um, and yeah, cheers. Thanks, thanks for that. And we'll, we'll come back to you. And it was like, uh, okay. I was on a holiday at the time. I thought nothing of it. It was, it was you know, it's, it's not an issue. Uh, next month, got a call, decided actually we want to bring you back on, uh, come back onto the board. And I was like, okay, what was all that about? Oh, that book you gave me, it said, get rid of everything <laughs> and work out what you're missing and then take back on what you need. Right. And sometimes it is, it's just, it's just get rid of all the clutter and then work out which bits you miss in your business and get it back on board. And I, and I know that sounds yeah. simplistic and it is obviously a lot harder to do that. Um, and, and, you know, and I, and I live through it on the other side. So um, I know what it's like, but what a great exercise. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm, as, as, as a business that supports all the, the rec tech kids at the space, um, there are pro probably a few bits that you can turn off or turn down but you know, it's very difficult now that everyone's got these puppies that they're using all day long. I wonder if, you know, it, it, if, if organizations look at what usage all of the recruiters are getting for the toolkit, the minute you take them away, they'll scream blue murder, say that's the most important thing in the world to me. But if they're not using it, then, then they shouldn't have it. That, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's the answer. I've got two more bits for you. Uh, one, um, we should outsource everything that we can that's non-core, right? So I, I truly believe that don't try and build up a business with uh, your own accounts and finance team. It get, it'll get to a point when you will want to have a permanent FD and you will want to have some people internally. But up to that point, people who run those departments end up building fiefdoms and saying, I need more and more people. The thing that you can do is shadow pretty much, if you get the chance to shadow everybody in your business and find out what they do. So that might be from resources, from recruiters, you will find parts of that process, which there is a thing that you asked them to do five years ago. that was the most important thing that, you, that they did that you haven't looked at for three years that takes time from them, or you've got a bit of technology that you can get at the uh, press a button, but you're still asking them to do that. Um, you will find parts of the process where you're thinking, well, that's just ridiculous. Why, why don't we just do it this way? So if you will find what people are doing, there will be elements of you're just not working hard enough. You think doing 10 of these is really hard. I reckon I could do a thousand, right? So you just find out what is actually going on. So get underneath the, the, the bonnet of your business and then you will make those informed decisions. But I do like the idea of taking everything away and just seeing the recruiters bleating, giving the old, yeah, but I love that. We just we should have used it. Should have, could have. Don't leave me. Should have, could have. Um, but, Woulda. There we go. Um, brilliant. Um, and I think the final note is get an FD, right? Get some sort of contract FD and, and live or die by cash forecasting. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, you, what are you saying about the efficiencies and the bottlenecks in a business? Until, until you find those out, you, you think everything's running well and that you do have to roll up your sleeves and look under the bonnet. Um, you started it, you lived it. Don't detach yourself too much from it. Brilliant. Um, until next time, bye.